So I remained on the treatment for my non-small cell through August of 2018, and during that time, I really, most of the time, was very normal. We traveled. Um, I got my husband to go to Europe, uh, not once, but twice. Um, and it was on that last trip in August of 2018, I noticed um, that I was not feeling quite you know, energized and came home and um, began to have my regular scans. And that's when we found out that, in fact, I did have small cell also, in addition to the non-small cell. Um, I must admit, I was kind of like, I, I guess I had taken it for granted that when one changed, it would not even include that the other one was still present. But in fact, I do have both of them, non-small cell and small cell, um, that my husband had done a little bit of research on and was able to explain to, to me a little bit more about it. Um, I was kind of incredulous, wondering, gosh, what else is there out there for me for treatment? Um, I think a lot of times at this point, because I'd had non-small cell and was functioning so normally, a lot of friends and associates and family just assumed that maybe I'd conquered it. Um, and then others um, at times may have asked questions that, for example, an insensitive type question was asked me of, you know, what my life expectancy was. And it was kind of hard for me to answer that one at that time. And, and many times people, when they heard that I was going back into a different treatment, said, oh, I thought you'd gotten rid of all that. But again, this is not anything that is not abnormal, I think, when you're not around a subject like a particular type of cancer uh, at that point. Did you ever notice anything that was said that was of any? No, but I've had other people say, oh, I didn't know she still had to be treated. You know, they thought that she was treated and cured, and of course, we were told from the get-go that there's no uh, real likelihood of a, an absolute cure with this disease, and it would be treated like a chronic disease for, for uh, you know, yeah, as like long. Like a diabetes kind of yeah. situation. Yeah, and, and that's exactly what it's been. And uh, when we did the research, I mean, when they didn't, a lot of, a lot of people say don't do the research because you'll yeah, see all these horrible the statistics yeah. in there. But actually, uh, you know, as my son, our son, who's a doctor, he said, well, those statistics take into account people that have no hope of being cured for various and other reasons. And, you know, certainly Nancy has uh, survived uh, and, and done, you know, had a very active and, and fulfilling life for, for a number of years beyond what those statistics would have predicted. So, you know, for people going through this, all is not gone. All, all hope is not gone. Because it's just amazing what these uh, really bright uh, and dedicated uh, oncologists and radio, uh, radio, radiation oncologists and surgeons and everybody are doing in this field, and it probably gets better every day. So, and it was about this time, too, that I did change oncologists to um, a doctor here in Charlotte at Levine who specializes in lung cancer. Um, and she was most instrumental in beginning my treatment for small cell, which was the chemo radiation. Not at the same time. I've heard of some people having to do that. And I did go on six rounds of chemo. Um, I would say 21 day intervals in between. Um, it was it was very noticeable. Side effects, etc., um, are pretty much. I kind of was able to manage uh, following a month off of chemo. I, I am now coming off of radiation, um, which was, of all the treatments I've had, was probably one of the hardest, is the hardest. Um, you know, the, some of the things, depending on the strength and the part of the body that's targeted during radiation and can make it from one extreme to another. And mine was pretty, pretty difficult since it was um, a nodule right up against the esophagus. So I've had to deal with some eating issues, but I'm three months, three weeks out of that. and starting to feel and, and be a lot better. Oh, much better. Much yeah, better. he was my really my caregiver during these days. Yeah. He's worked the whole time, but this is one time I think he was home a little bit more than he might have expected. Yeah, the chemo and radiation were probably the most, um, I don't know, the most uh, d difficult, toxic. Uh, well, toxic and difficult treatments that you've under undertaken so far. Um, obviously, the the chemo, you said you had six treatments. It was six treatments, three days each, so you actually yeah, had 18. 18. And, um, 
you know, she'd have a, the, the, the more she got into it, the more it affected her. It's a cumulative. It, yeah, yeah very thing. cumulative, as was the radiation. And uh, it, it wasn't, I mean, you know, it's difficult to see a person as active and as energetic and high energy as Nancy is to be flat on her back and not even able to get up and get her own food or whatever. So you have to be prepared for something like that, but she bounced right back, and then the radiation was even more difficult. Uh, that was a little bit of a surprise to us because it uh, affected her esophagus, and um, we had to actually take her to the ER twice to get fluids and to um, get some medication to help her eat, and I was very concerned that she was not going to eat. Um, but, you know, that was, and it was, wasn't that long ago, it was just a couple of weeks ago, and now look at her, she's bounced right back. And so, you know, as difficult as that can get, it's certainly worthwhile doing because she's, again, um, getting out there doing the things she likes to do. That's right. Yep. Trying to plan another trip. <laughs>